welcome to Farm Sweet Farm. We're getting ready for TV day tomorrow, so I was wanting to do a little video. There's uh, several steps with it, and of course, as you know, I can only fit um, so much into three minutes, so I was going to show you just a few of the details to help you make this dish. So we're doing um, a roasted butternut squash stuffed with um, loaded, basically a loaded butternut squash. It is amazing and um, half of the butternut squash ends up being like an entire meal. So it's really good. Um, I could almost not finish mine the other night um, and it, oh, it's amazing. You're going to love it. So the first thing I've done is um, I'm in the oven. I have got, I've halved the butternut squash and scooped it out, put olive oil and salt sprinkled on it and put it upside down. And we have had that in for 20 minutes. That's all it takes um, just to really to get it going and to be to where it is actually cooked. Um, we'll turn that over here in a second. Then our other little surprise is um, these brats. These are from Grassroots um, Ranch and they have green un green pepper and onion inside the, the brat. So I'm going to... Um, Go ahead and turn these over. You've got to excuse the mess in the kitchen. This is a real family kitchen. So I'm going to put those back in. They're obviously, I had that on 380. So they're going to be in for at least another 20 minutes, I would think. do that to remind me because I'm feeling a little frazzled and probably won't remember so let's see how these turned out now these ones are the one ones that I'm actually going to have on the TV with me tomorrow okay so I'm looking for that to be totally soft and it's not soft enough so I'm going to go ahead and put that back in Probably because it wasn't fully preheated when I put it in. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the stuff the, that's loading the butternut squash, what I've got in here is um, about five green onions, five of these, um, and one clove of garlic. And I um, pan sauteed that for just a few minutes till it was almost starting to turn brown then I've added some of this in and this is honestly the key between a nice dish and like a fantastic dish um, so you put this in and it's real bright red when it first goes in and you just let it sit on the pan there till it starts turning a deeper brown deeper red sorry then over to the side I've got um, I'm going to mix that in a while but it's important that this kind of roasts in the pan at first. We've got one green bell pepper and then I'm going to add about a cup of eggplant and I'm still keeping this on the side. That's probably going to be a little bit more than a, than a cup but there we go. And I had to put salt on the onion so I'm just going to do a tiny little bit on the eggplant little bit of olive oil and then we've got four tomatoes and this is a great way to use up tomatoes that I'm um, maybe you're a little soft not quite perfect see my knife's not sharp I do need to sharpen my knife I'm not doing lamps and silverware knives any any benefit because they are wonderful knives I just haven't sharpened mine today on my list of things to do so when I'm doing this I'm preparing for the one this is going to be the finished one tomorrow then I also have my bits and bobs over here for the one that I actually do when I'm on TV so I'm kind of trying to double think here so I chop this up and you know the thing with eggplant is it it usually is so oily because it does take so much moisture to cook it through and by putting the tomatoes on top we're using the 
tomatoes to put moisture into the eggplant instead of oil, which just keeps that little bit more healthy. So that's that. We're going to, um, it's going to be a good 10 minutes before this is ready to stuff. So now that tomato puree has turned um, that nice deep red colour, we're just going to mix that all in. We could have almost done with the size pan smaller. I'm doing that small, I think it's like a nine inch lodge cast iron, the one with the cute little side handles. That's what I'm going to use tomorrow on the on the TV. But yeah, that smaller pan is just going to keep those juices in and on the, the eggplant. So I'm going to put my lid on and real time, it's going to be about 10 minutes. So right before we check on the butternut squash and the What's in there? Brats. Yeah. That's probably not a great great look for me today that close. Um, so then what we'll do is when we bring that out, we're going to scoop out most of the butternut squash flesh. Not all of it because it still needs some flesh in there to support the shape of it. Um, and then we'll mix that cooked flesh with this, um, I'm going to call it the gut. The, the filling in the pan, we're going to mix that up and then put it in back into the butternut squash case. And then when, once the brats are cooked, we'll slice them up and slice, just put the slices on top and then cover it with grated cheese. And the cheese we'll be using is from Swan Brothers Dairy up in Claremore. And I've gone for a um, strong cheddar. It's real nice. It's a white cheese. Um, and it doesn't melt to where it's going to be like all goopy all over the place and fatty. It just has a gentle melt point. I don't even know if that's a thing, but you know what I mean. So that's what we'll do. Mix it all in. Top it with the cooked, fully cooked brats. None of this pink in the middle shenanigans. I'm not going for that with sausages. And then put the cheese over the top under the broiler for just literally a few minutes for that because it's all cooked at this point. A few minutes under the broiler um, to get that cheese a little melted and brown and then ding dong, it's done. So come watch me tomorrow if you can on channel 8. It's October 5th, I think. Not just after 9 o'clock, channel 8. And I hope you enjoy it and I hope you watch the recipe. Thank you guys.